Perfectionism to me, and this is my perspective, it's almost like the tip of the iceberg. There's something below the surface. Do you Absolutely. agree with that? And, and can you talk to what's your experience about that? Like what's driving perfectionism? Yeah, perfectionism is it's always covering up something else. You know, like I said, there, there's no such thing as writer's block. Writer's block is just the name that we give a million other things that are a problem. You've written yourself into a mm. corner. You're psyching yourself out. You've been discouraged, whatever. But it, it's, it does not exist as a thing on its own. Perfectionism... It, it does take on a life of its own. It's its own thing, but it has to do with people pleasing or achieving. It can be trying to please your teachers, please your parents. Um, a lot of times when we were growing up, um, the adults in our lives can confuse love and acceptance. And so, and it's, it's not just all in our heads. It's that they're not remembering to express that they love us when we are not behaving in a way that is acceptable or not making the choices they would want, or we make mistakes. And, <clears throat> you know, depending on the people in your life, sometimes you're just walking on eggshells, waiting for someone else's anxiety to, to trigger or something. So even just a red mark on a paper from, you know, from your teacher to say, oh, you, you misspelled that, can feel like, you know, oh my God, no, this is a disaster, what have I done? Because it's, it's you just want to have nothing. Not, 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 you, know, you don't want to have any acknowledgement for anything wrong. You want to have at the end of the day, at the end of the school year, a pat on the head. Oh, yeah, you, you did great. But <clears throat> for the most part, you're trying just to make people happy and to hide. You don't. Mm. And it can keep you from, from learning and from stretching because that's how you, you, know, you learn by making mistakes. And if you stay within your own comfort zone and your own skill set, especially as a child, you're not going to develop at all. You know, mm. you have to be uncomfortable at some point. But it is... It is the people pleasing. It's the trying to avoid trauma. It's trying to avoid rejection mm. <clears throat> is a big part of it. We're social creatures. And so, you know, if all of the kids in your grade school um, decide that you're not cool anymore and reject you, and, you know, when you get to high school and college, you'll realize those are jerks. What they think doesn't matter. But <clears throat> in the moment, you've been rejected by your society, and there's a very primal reaction to that yes. where it, it's the worst thing ever and you think okay well if i'm perfect if i'm perfectly cool if i dress the right way if i'm the perfect girlfriend whatever i will get <clears throat> what i want socially and that's not how social interaction actually works <laughs> mm. <clears throat> you know so it, it can be that it can be fear just mm. a lot of fear if you have been laid off and i, I did the dot coms i was laid off mm. several times um it's fine you know, it's just, it happens. When the entire company shuts down, eh, fine. It's, it's not your fault. You do not get fired. Um, so it is helpful to to yeah. be part of a big slaughter like that as opposed yeah. to something Experience. you know, oh, Yes. Yeah. Instead of your, your performance is not up to par, it's like, oh, no, yeah, no, the entire company just kind of didn't work right. <laughs> or worked so well that they decided to move the entire office to the other coast and not take any of you with, you, with them, mm -hmm. uh, which did happen. <laughs> so it, it's... Um, you know, you try to think, okay, how can I prevent that? How can I make them happy? How can I get mm. them to like me? How can I be invaluable? If you become invaluable in your job, you will never get promoted is the thing. <laughs> you need to be good at what you do and have someone else doing it so that you can get, move on to doing, adding some more experience and more responsibility for yourself. Mm. And it, it's, and also there's nothing you can do. Literally, the, the, there's nothing you can do to keep a company afloat. Um, even if you are the CEO, if you're the president, um, the company that, that shut down the office and moved to the other coast, it was because we were doing so well, and so financially successful that uh, our corporate overlords started to pay attention. And that, yeah, that was the problem. And so when our, the president's contract was up, they replaced with someone else who lived on the other coast and had the clout to move mm. all of us over there. If, they, <laughs> if we had just done that quite as well. You know, so it, it's, there's, you know, we can't avoid it. And we think, you know, when we see someone else has a problem or something, ha a tragedy happens to them, what did they do? Well, what happened? Hmm. You know, you think, oh, did they cause that car accident? Hmm. They, we all think, oh, well, are they, they deserve that but for, for whatever reason. Because that way they think, then if, I, if I'm perfect, there are things that I can do where it won't happen to me. And that yeah. is just a lie to ourselves. We... 
you know, it's, it's just the lie of safety. You know, we just have to delude ourselves to keep going because the fact that anyone could drop dead from an aneurysm at any second is, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot to live with. And, you know, if there's a non, I'm in California, there's a non-zero chance that the big one is going to hit while we're on this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very small chance, so it's okay. And when you've had a, a good, easy life, it is very easy to slip into, okay, yeah, I could lose all this. And if I don't behave perfectly, I'm in trouble. That's when something will happen. And that's not true. But it, it's just something we tell ourselves to, to keep going. Now, I, I think that is very important, what you're, you're pointing towards now. I mean, because what I heard you say, basically, is that the perfectionism is about, it, it's more of a coping mechanism, almost. It's a way to deal and handle. Um, and I like what you're saying in terms of it's out of your hands. Like, you know, we, we think that the strategy of getting things perfect is going to protect us and save us and, you know, help us achieve what we want to achieve. And what you're saying is, that's not really true. That could possibly be a lie. Yeah, we, we like to delude ourselves that we have control. Hmm. You know, but there's a million people who thought they were the perfect spouse who ended up divorced. Mm -hmm. People who were perfectly healthy were running. I mean, how many people have heart attacks while jogging? Hmm. You know, it was it was just going to happen. You know, people who are have a very healthy diet and are very thin have very high cholesterol because genetically that's just how it is. Uh, so it, it's, we don't have much control. We are helpless. We are pawns in the universe. It is terrifying. And even I have to forget <laughs> that sometimes. So there's some science fiction books where I just realize, oh no, I just feel so small right now. No, I need to put yeah. this down and walk away. Cause, oh, it's terrifying. But, you know, cause we are the stars of our own lives. And yeah. everyone else is a supporting character. And, but we're the supporting character in their life. There, there's this wonderful quote uh, from, there's a, a podcast, a fictional podcast called Welcome to Night Vale. And they say, um, death is only the end if you think the story is about you. Mm. Yeah, I was like, oh, I have to stop <laughs> this, write this down. That was profound. <laughs> That's, I love that. Yeah, that's the thing, but my life, my life, this all, is all about me. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but it isn't the greater, broader story. Yeah. 